support the G5TM channel by subscribing, becoming a YouTube channel member and joining on Patreon. Okay, let me tell you why these things, the LiFo 4 battery, I think are a lifesaver and a brilliant addition to your ham radio experience. Welcome to the channel. I think there's three reasons why LiFo 4 batteries are an essential item to your ham radio experience. Number one, let's look at cost, or should I say the falling cost. So when I returned to the hobby back in 2015, I looked long and hard at different sort of portable power options. Uh, lead acid batteries and sort of um, leisure batteries, uh, great capacity on them, but very heavy things. In the end, I went for the LifePo 4. Now that wasn't cheap. Uh, the one I bought was a Tracer 24 amp hour. Still use it today, hasn't missed a beat in, in, in nearly 10 years, but it cost me a lot of money, about 350 pounds, okay? A lot of money for a battery. However, one of the best purchases I've ever made, and it's still going strong today. Uh, the other one uh, that I've bought recently is this Ultramax, which is about a 22 or 24 amp hour again. Now, the cost, I bought this about three or four years ago, maybe three years ago, 130 pounds. So literally, same capacity, literally down uh, a third of the price. So prices have come down, and that's good news because the ability now to use 100 watt or 50 watt, 100 watt stations, portable, there's no excuse for it now, really. You can do that because these batteries are basically a lot cheaper than they were. So reason number two is down to their convenience. They're convenience in two ways. First of all, they're convenient because of their weight or the lack of. You can carry these things around with your little finger, all right? They're very, very simple and easy to store and very lightweight to carry around. I've got a 22 amp hour one here. You can get 10 amp hour ones as well, which are even lighter. So no problems at all with that. The other reason why they're convenient is because they're easy to charge as well. They can usually come, as you can see, there's a little hole to plug the charger in there. They usually come with a bespoke charger, which then just plugs simply into the wall. Dead simple to use and dead simple to charge. So they are very convenient things. However, price and convenience are all very well. But of course, the most important thing is, is how well the thing actually works. And this is where LifePool 4 batteries come into their own. Compared to lead acid batteries, which sort of degrade steadily over the period of use, lead acid, uh, sorry, the LifePool 4 batteries tend to hold their charge for a lot longer at a very higher, much higher voltage. This means that you see very little degradation in performance until the very end of that particular total charge that the battery has. With a lead acid battery, once you get down to about 12 volts, you should really stop using the battery because once you get below sort of 50% capacity, do that over a period of time over and over again, you'll end up killing the battery. With the LifePo 4, we can see that basically it keeps its charge to the very end and drops off like a cliff just before the thing empties out. And that is why it's a much more convenient thing to use. Uh, so therefore, the LifePo 4 performs well, holds its charge for longer, uh, is lighter in weight, and also the cost of it is coming down to be comparable, or nearly comparable anyway, with the lead acid batteries is up against. So in England, as we say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So what I did, I charged my Ultramax LifePo 4 battery fully and then took her out over and over again without any charging at all in between to see just how long the LifePo 4 battery would last for. So what was I using her on? Well, it was SSB, 100 watts, giving it the full stress test, and I was operating parks on the air and bunkers on the air, which means I wasn't doing a lot of searching or any searching and pouncing. I was calling CQ, CQ, CQ all the time and giving it the full stress test. So how many hours did the battery last for? How many QSOs did I make? Well, let's have a look at my very brief video diary to see how much we got out of this little thing here. How good are they in terms of lasting on a single charge? Cue the stress test. We're going to try now some parks on the air, which usually, usually brings out some uh, a good range on a good run of contacts. Germany 5, Tango, Mexico. Calling CQ, parks on the air and standing by. Uh, Oscar, November 6th, November Lima. Calling the CQ Parks on the Air from Golf Bravo 0265 and listening. Nothing heard. G5TM now going to go temporarily QRT.
Okay, so it's day two in how much life can we squeeze out of this LifePo 4 battery. Uh, we switched the uh, rig on, the 857D, and we've got 13.1 volts showing to the radio. And CQ Poto and standing by. The CQ parks on the air and listening. Mike listening, full parks on the air. CQ, CQ parks on the air, CQ parks on the air. QRZ, this is Golf 5, Tango Mike, parks on the air. The QRZ parks on the air, Golf 5, Tango, Mike. Uh, QRZ, bunkers and parks on the air, G5TM. Uh, from Park, Golf Bravo, 0308, Chichester Harbour. And bunker, Bravo Golf, 0808, ROC, Post Chichester, QRZ. Good luck with the activation, 73. Very fine, Jacko, 73, and thank you for the call. Golf 5, Tango Mike, parks and bunkers on the air, QRZ. Give me your bunker, but you know your web square. Now, I don't know my WAB, I should have done that before I came out, but I've got my bunker and I've got the park. The park is Golf Bravo Zero. I think there's somebody in there. I've got S2 of noise and you're right in that noise, but I can hear something. We'll keep listening. Okay, I think I'll last call on 40 for a short while. Ah. <laughs> that would be it then. So, last call on 40. Well, finally, the Ultramax 22 amp hour has died. <laughs> Not died, but has uh, finally cut out on me. But I can tell you now, it's been an absolute workhorse. I've been caning it on 100 watts, calling CQ, none of this search and pounce nonsense, parks on the air, whatever, 100 watts, never turned the power down at all, all SSB. So it just shows how much of a punch these particular batteries pack on them, you know, and I'm very, very happy with her indeed. So pretty impressive, eh? The LifePo 4. Take a look at it. If you've not uh, set up your portable station yet or you want to upgrade your battery options, have a look. As I say, about £130, £150 for a 22, 24 amp hour will give you all that on 100 watts. Think on. If you're a QRP operator, maybe use a G90 at 20 watts, a maximum SSB, maybe a digital around 5 or 10 watts, a CW. I think one of these will last you a hell of a long time, won't they? Uh, in terms of recharging it, by the way, when I drained her, she went, uh, I took about seven hours to recharge her. So the amount of time I had to use her was only just a bit longer to actually charge her back up and she's working fine now again. Um, the final voltage I saw, by the way, was about 10.8 volts when I switched her back on briefly to see what the, the 891 was showing. So she fell literally from about 12.7, 12.6 volts down to 10.8, just like that chart showed. So there we go. All that time then with the Ultramax with the between charges. Not bad, eh? Well, if you like what you've seen, think about clicking subscribe, join the channel to become a member, join the conversation by adding your comments below. Let me know how you have got on with your portable uh, powering of your HF station. 73, and we'll catch you again soon. Bye for now.